Good morning, a marvelous Monday morning to you all. My name is Naturalist Kirk. I'm your host for Lowry at Home. I'm sure you've noticed that fall is here. Some of those yellow leaves have already started to fall off the trees. Now for some of you, you're going, woo, winter is on the way, but I know others of you are kind of sad to see summer go. One of my favorite parts of summer are all the beautiful flowers. And you know what? They're not gone yet. There's lots of flowers that bloom in the fall, which makes sense because there's animals that are still depending on them this time of year. Naturalist Laurel for today's show went out to take a look at some of those wildflowers that are in the prairie and also get a glimpse at some of the animals that depend on them. So take it away, Laurel. Hello, it is Laurel. Thanks for joining me today. It is the end of the growing season, but I thought we could check out some of the really cool flowers that we have late in the season out on the prairie. A little bit like this one right back here. Did you guys spot the bumblebee? That's why we're going to the prairie. We've got some really awesome flowers that will be flowering all the way through frost. So let's go. I am visiting a prairie that is very close by to Lowry Nature Center. This is at Dragonfly Pond and very close to Chickadee Landing. But if you look behind me, I have one of our classic tall grass prairie plants. I have a big blue stem. As I stand up, you guys can see how tall this plant is. It's up over my head. Pretty cool. Looking down this way, we've got a little, looks like a deer trail. I wanted to stop by here to talk about some of the flowers that we have late in the season. Prairies are pretty awesome because they will continue to have flowers all the way through frost. Some years that's October, some years that might be into November. One of our latest flowering plants are the asters, and right now we have goldenrods that are really showy. They're also really important for pollinators. If you hike around out here, you are going to find bees. We have honeybees nearby, so they're visiting the goldenrod. That's a really important honey source late in the fall. We also have tons of bumblebees, and it's still possible to survey them and figure out who's visiting what this time of the year. I don't know if you can see back behind me, but we have a group of people out, volunteers and staff, and they are collecting seeds that we can propagate or grow our prairie plants from. So we have a horticulture group that grows our prairie plants from seed, and that means in the fall, when all of these seed heads are ready to go, check out these guys, we will collect seed heads particularly from flowers in order to grow them and reseed our prairies with them. We go out and pick one species or seed head type at a time. In this case, it's Monarda or bee balm. It's one of our plants that is done. The seeds are completely dry. And this group is working together to basically fill up an entire paper grocery bag with those seeds so that we have them ready to grow from for next spring. I'm going to pan around here so you guys can see the size of this prairie and the people spread out through it to collect seeds. Pretty much each individual is working on collecting a different species. Hey, check it out, we found a bumblebee. This one is flying a little bit too quickly for me to identify but it is visiting our New England aster. Looking close to the ground on the prairie, we found this really cool bottle gentian plant. We actually found several of these throughout the prairie. They come in pinks or blues or sometimes a white or cream color. Here we have a prairie aster, that's the purple daisy-like flower up close to us, and in the background you can see yellow, that is stiff goldenrod. It has kind of a flat top compared to common goldenrod. Look who we found hiding in the goldenrod. This is a little boy eastern bumblebee. Next up, this is common goldenrod, and when I visited, it was covered in bumblebees and also honeybees. This goldenrod is one of the top nectar sources for 
honeybees getting ready to go into winter. This looks like another type of aster. Not super sure, it might be panicled aster. And it has a green sweat bee right in the middle of it. One of the cool things about native prairie is once it gets going in early summer, it has flowers throughout the entire season. This is something I use to inspire some of my choices at home in my own garden. That way I can plan on a garden that has both blooms and nectar until frost. prairies late in the season, I like to pay attention to the different flowers that I'm seeing. I will identify them and figure out if that is a species that would do well in my own garden. This end of the garden is full sun and I have black-eyed Susans or Rudbeckia, a couple different varieties. These will go until late into October. They'll continue flowering that whole time. A little bit beyond that, um, I have some Selvia. These have been blooming all summer. I put them in in June. Uh, and they still have flowers. They had a little uh, resurgence later on in the season. Farther down, I have sedum. Not a native flower, uh, but it's very tolerant of cooler temperatures. And let's take a look at what I found out in it this morning. The sedum was absolutely covered in bumblebees and eventually honeybees too, once it warmed up a bit. Another one of my favorites in the garden are Rudbeckia. They're very similar to coneflowers, but a lot of the garden varieties will continue flowering very late in this season. I bet you recognize this one. This is New England Aster. In the garden, it gets very tall. It can be almost five feet tall, and it will flower sometimes into November. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of flowers both in the prairie and some of the flowers that will do well in your garden back at home. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Laurel. Uh, so cool to see all those flowers and great to see people out there in the prairie too. You know, all those people were part of a public seed collection program that we were doing at the Nature Center. That's right, we are doing some programming again, completely outside and uh, in a lot of safe ways. So we hope you'll come up to some of our programs this fall. What are we doing? Tell you what, check out the listing just after the show here. In the credits, we list all the upcoming programs, including some by Naturalist Laurel herself. So if you want to see more of Laurel and see more of the Nature Center, be sure to sign up for those programs. And we'll see you soon out at Lowry Nature Center. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.